Hey everyone, it's Jim from Mellow Tone Kits, and together we're going to build this wonderful sounding preamp. And while we're at it, I'll share my build techniques, tips, and tricks with you, and try not to bore you with too many of my old stories. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them, and always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And caution, soldering irons can have very high heat present and are a burn and fire hazard. Never leave a soldering iron on unattended, and I highly recommend purchasing one of the variable temperature control units that has an auto off feature. I've been saved a couple of times by that feature on mine and always have adequate ventilation when soldering. Okay, now we're actually going to use the kit build number one for the E80CC preamp as an example. Now the reason for that is that this is the, the best build to date of these preamps. The layout is just about perfect and the topology between the two preamps is almost identical. Topology just means the framework or the overall design of something. Yes, the sockets will change over to an octal, and the preamp boards themselves, though they're the same size, will have a different circuit on them. But basically, it's very much the same thing. Okay, let's jump right into it. So, the kits come in two basic options. You can get silver transformer covers with a silver knob, or you can get black covers with a black knob. And if you want to mix it up, just send me a note in the order and we can mix it up for you. All right, let's get the lids off. Now, the heart of any amplifier is a quality transformer. This is your power transformer. And this is, this is a hybrid transformer. It's called an R-Core. It's very low noise, it's compact, and it's, this particular model is perfectly suited to what we want to do. And the reason for that is that it's got a matched twin high voltage secondary winding. And what that allows us to do is to create a dual mono design. And we'll talk more about that as we go over the preamp. But essentially a dual mono preamp is, is basically like having two separate mono preamps inside one chassis. Neat, huh? And that gives us a fantastic stereo separation. Great stereo separation leads us, it's the foundation for a lovely sound stage. Now, I've talked at length about the Universal 6 or 12 SN7 in tube labs, so I'm going to put a link below if you want to watch any of those. Okay, so. Up here we've got two large filter capacitors. We've got a pair of inputs on a simple switch. So whichever way the switch is pointing, that's the inputs that are active. It's also got a center off or detente position. So if you want to do some work, unplug something, whatever, you can actually have a signal present on the inputs and they won't be connected up to anything with the center position. Over here we've got a pair of RCAs going out. You're of course going to have two sockets on the top, octals in this case. And over here we've got our switch mode power supply input jack. It's a DC input jack. This is one of the differences on the universal that you're going to build. It's actually a three-way switch. Forward is going to be 6 volt back is going to be for the 12 volt. Remember, this is a universal preamp, so you can play the 6SN7 or the 12SN7 or any close variant. And it can also play the lower spec 6SN7 GT, the very first generation that really has a hard time with modern um, amplifier voltages. And the three-way switch is just like this one. It's actually got a center off. Now, a switch mode power supply is just a little tiny power brick, just like what you would use to power 
your laptop only at a specific voltage. Most laptops are running around, I think, 17 volts. In this case, we want the closest we can get to 6.3 is 7 volts. And you'll see in a minute, as we get through the build, that there's actually a small dropping resistor to get us from 7 down to 6.4, 6.3, something like that. And the nearest to 12.6 volts that we can get is a 12 volt transformer, which will work absolutely perfectly. It just has a simple IEC in. It's a universe. All of my transformers and kits are all universal. So they can run on any voltage from 100 volts all the way up to 240 volts AC mains. That makes them very flexible. You can, you could, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can build one of these kits and it'll work just fine. If you set it up for your voltage, of course. Okay. In the back, we've got a standard IEC entrance. So whatever, the, the kits aren't supplied with a power cord because whatever cord you use in your country, you probably have them lying around and we're trying to avoid creating more e-waste, which is a huge problem. There's a fuse holder right in here for the primary, and there's just an on-off switch. Up is on, and it lights beautifully. So, And it's in the back, so it's just perfect. It's designed so that you can actually just lean your hand over and turn your gear on without ever looking. Okay, let's flip it over. Well, let's see the volume knob. There's not much to see. I like to keep my volume knobs at 12 o'clock off, and that allows us to hide the set screw. You'll never see it because nor a normal listening volume for most preamps is going to be somewhere around here. It doesn't take that much gain to drive most power amps. Okay, let's, let's look at the guts. Let me grab a pointer here. Now you can start to see the dual mono design. So after the transformer, there's two of everything. You saw on the top the filter chokes. There's two of them. Here we've got We've got our right-hand power supply board, our left-hand board, we've got our right-hand preamp board, and our left-hand preamp board. So after the transformer windings, everything is completely separate. You have two preamps inside one case. The boards themselves um, are laid out and clearly labeled so it's it's dead easy to get everything where it belongs. It may look like a little bit much all taken for the first time, but when we when we build this together, we're actually going to build it one little chunk at a time. And I'm going to try to do the segments, the episodes in a small enough chunk that you can you can complete one in a spare bit of time you've got in the evening or whenever you have some free time. It's always best to do one episode, do one build, get it done properly, and then move on. So we've got our power supply boards, we've got our preamp boards, you can see our coupling capacitors here. These are really nice, good quality coupling caps. They're made by Solon in France. I like these. They're affordable, they sound great, you could spend a thousand times more money than these cost and yes you could see some sound improvement but then the kits would be you know double the price. <laughs> um, over here we've got a good quality Alps volume pot. It's a, it's a dual ganged pot so it's a stereo pot and to facilitate wiring up to it the little pins are are actually mounted on a little PCB. Over here you can see the input switching. It looks tricky but it's actually very easy and it's one of my favorite things to do because once once you know what your your dimensions are and I'll give them to you, you just make up your wires and you just connect it all up. And over here we've got our heater in. Now the dropping resistor is not showing here but at, when we build um, kit number one, you'll see the dropping resistor. It's just going to mount across here. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is everything is laid out very carefully. That's called wire dress or lead dress. And as we put in place wires and sections of the preamp, 
I'll talk about how I'd like things laid out and we'll refer back to this this build because this is superb. These are very quiet preamps and lead dress or wire dress is really a big part of that picture. I'll give you a simple example. You see how the the high voltage, the B plus, is flying in over the top of the circuit here. You see how the heater feeds are swinging out of the road here. You can't really see that. Let me just lean it up for you. They're swinging over here and around and away from the RCAs and then they're flying in over. Now DC is inherently quiet. That's why we're using DC to to run our heater our heaters or our filaments on our tubes or to lamp them. That's an old-fashioned term. Um, but it still still can cause problems. Everything can cause problems. So why not just do good neat lead dress or wire dress and try to avoid them. So that's what we're going to do. You may notice that on the output side here the signal coming off of the board and going out this is the finish of the whole circuit right here. These are the RCA jacks out. They've actually got shielded cable. And the reason why they're shielded and the input is not is that they're all coming through this area in which there's lots going on. There's high voltage here, there's two preamp boards, there's the DC in. So we want to shield them from any possible noise that they could pick up. Over here this is the nice quiet side of the preamp and we don't really need to worry about that. Same over here. And the last thing I want to show you is the very careful ground system. There's a safety ground tucked way in here all on its own. There's a power supply ground that's a star ground point here. And the preamp side has its own ground star point right here. And it, it took me many builds and much thinking and much rearranging and wiring to come to this layout. And it gives us a dead quiet preamp, which is what we want. Okay, folks, in the next episode, we're going to get organized.